we'll move on to the next session um, and um, this is again by uh, from Bhutan uh, on uh, by Dr. Sonam Chukki uh, on uh, she's going to make a presentation on rediscovering basic goodness boundless ways of being authentic in the global world uh, Dr. Sonam Chukki uh, is actually uh, has PhD in gender and politics from Queensland University of Technology Australia a master's in development and international relations from Aalborg University, Denmark. Uh, a postgraduate certificate in education from National Institute of Education, Bhutan, and a bachelor's in English literature from uh, Sher Butsi College, Bhutan. Uh, Dr. Sonam has taught gender and development studies and management at the Royal Institute of Management in Thimphu, Bhutan for over 20 years. Uh, she has publications in gender, democracy, politics, and management. Currently, she is a curriculum developer in history and civics education, Royal Education Council in Paro. Uh, Sonam's area of uh, research interest are gender studies, women empowerment, Buddhist philosophy and development, and sustainable development. She is a devoted admirer and follower of Shakyamuni Buddha, a social worker an advocate of women and minorities genuine empowerment we really honored dr sonam chuki to have with us you with with us you in this conference uh, now the time is yours thank you ma'am uh, can everyone hear me clearly yes yes yes, yes. thank you ma'am a warm greeting from bhutan namaskar to all the organizers uh, i bow to the exalted land of india the land of Mahasiddhas, Devas and Devis and Rishis. Uh, nothing like actually making presentation today. Uh, the, the most holiest month in the Buddhist calendar across the world. This is the month where Shakyamuni Buddha, after attaining enlightenment, displayed miracles. And today, the seventh day, Shakyamuni Buddha appeared as universal monarch to the Shakya clan, to inspire the Shakya clan and ancient Indian devotees. So it's very auspicious for me uh, to, to have this wonderful opportunity to share some of my views from here. So, uh, could, you please, could, you, could you please show my slides? Otherwise, I'll share from my, uh, my presentation from here. Can I share from here? Please, ma'am, please. Okay, I will do, it, do this then because I don't see others doing it. Let me do it from here. Okay. So, uh, as Dr. Nito Dodge again pointing out, the going inside. So here today, I let's look at our basic goodness. Why do we need it now? And how, what kind of ways are there to actually rediscover, reconnect with the basic goodness? Well, if you look at look around the world in COVID situation, many countries, right, from Europe to America, of course, India went under lockdown for months. And during lockdown, this immense suffering for all beings, human beings, animals, you know, microorganisms, everybody. So when outside is lockdown, here is a time where we can where how why we need to go inside. This is where we discover, as Doju was saying earlier on, inner search, contemplation, and reconnecting with ourselves. I think we are in a global world which is so competitive. We are so busy hanging outside, hanging around outside. We have no time to rediscover ourselves. Hanging around with ourselves. And today, there are young people listening today. Young people, dear young friends, it's cool to hang around with yourself. Let's hang around with our mind. And lockdown situation, if there's any again coming in, which, which may be likely if vaccine do not work, here's the time to rediscover ourselves, to go inside and in a search. Now, uh, why do we, as human beings, as homo sapiens, why do we also, as soon as we look at the nature, it suits your, your mind. If you look at India, for example, the mighty Indian Ocean, or the Bay of Bengal, or your national parks and reserves, or the animals, birds, mountains, 
flora and fauna would suit your mind. Here also, if you look at this beautiful picture of National Waterfall, somehow, I mean, you feel connected and you want to do it. Why do you do it? You all of us do it, right? Why do you wait for the shining moon to actually appear on the full moon day? Enjoy the moon and find the moon romantic. Moon that inspires you, suits your mind. Why do you do it? We wait for it. And there are tourists from around the world investing huge amount of money, the US dollars or euros to just see the great Indian Ocean or the sunrise in the morning and the sunset in the morning or moonshine at night. Why do you do it? Why do you also want to pose if the young people who are listening from across 29 countries yesterday, well, Chief, the honorable guest, chief guest stated that young people are looking for purpose and meaning in life. You want to be constructive, offer constructive suggestions and be civically engaged in the world. Why do you pose by the waterfall? Why do you want to do it? Many of us in India, I think that India is incredible. You have many gods and goddesses and temples around the country, thousands. You visit it every day. And also, if you look at our, our Dharma brothers and sisters from around the world, many temples in Vietnam, Cambodia, Sri Lanka, Myanmar, China, why do you visit it? You make a time. You also want to, I don't think so, whatever you offer, the gods want to drink it and eat it. But still, you make it an effort. You want to visit it. Why do you want to look at the fluttering prayer flags? If you look at the Indian Himalayas, for example, just as the Bhutanese Himalayas here, yeah. you like to look at the wonderful fluttering prayer flags in the wind. And you, you just want to stay there. You also take time to make heart pilgrimages where the stampede and people, you know, people also risk their lives to climb the mountains to visit this heart. A, 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 you know, a hard, long journey to temple. Why do you also want to light bottle lamps? Why do you want to see this bottle lamp illuminating the darkness? Why do you love blue sky in the autumn? And of course, the golden rice fields again in the autumn. Well, that's all because all of us, including the microorganisms, Amoeba in your stomach, and even at this time now, they have what we call as Buddha nature, uh, Tathagata Garva, which is also called as basic goodness. It, uh, even Saddam Hussein, Osama bin Laden, Dekites in India, Gundas in India, everybody possesses Tathagata Garva or basic goodness. This is why we love shining moon. We love flora and fauna. We love golden rice fields, clear blue sky, visiting temples and monasteries, nature, uh, the forest baths, the walk in the woods, the evening walk, the sunsets and sunrise. That's because we all have basic goodness. And we also have boundless ways of doing it, as Buddha taught in 84, noble 84,000 ways of doing it. That's because basic goodness concerns with our mind, as the earlier presenter, my colleague, Dr. Doji, referred to as mind. Mind is the king of the body. Mind controls everything. This is why we talk about disciplines such as psychology. Today, if you look at William James, the famous psychologist, even, in, even as he was trying to reconnect with psychology and Buddhism. He said, Buddhism is going to have the highest impact on psychology. This Buddhism concerns the science of mind, and mind is the king of body. His eminence of Kensu Rinpoche, one of the Vosatel teachers, Buddhist teachers in the 21st century world, says that mind is bigger, vast, infinite, and cannot be verbalized. It can, whereas if you look at our body, our body can be measured in terms of weight, in terms of height, in terms of body mass in desk, in, but mind is inexpressible. It cannot be verbalized. 
And yet, that this mind controls, the basic good that controls our body. As, as earlier speaker said, it's, uh, uh, sorry, it's dukkha. It's dukkha which is, which deals with, relates with mind. So if dukkha relates with mind, then mind is more important than body. In Bhutanese proverb, a local Bhutanese proverb says, make your mind malleable, tenable and workable because mind controls the body and therefore you'll have peace of mind. After all, we are the back of emotions with extreme emotions, extreme aggression, extreme greed, lust, desire, attachments. This is why we are, this is why we are troubled as the earlier speakers pointed at. For our body, we have anti-aging creams, we have vitamin supplements, we have hair cream, skin cream, supplements for our muscles and our bones. But for our body, the king, do we have much care? Did we give much care? No. Because globalization doesn't talk about mind. Mind is basically neglected, as his eminence comes from which he says. Because globalization talks about making money. Globalization talks about only body. How do we become efficient, productive? And increasing commercialization talks about extreme speed, speed, greed, and aggression. It doesn't talk about basic goodness at all. If you look at modern education, it's so, it's so, so sad to see, see that ancient India where you had yeah, where Buddha taught in India, that's your biggest and priceless export to the world. You had the British Raj colonizing India and introducing British modeled education, which of course Bhutan too borrowed, and modern education per se, modern technology doesn't, it just encourage competition, competence, efficiency and productivity discourse, but not about peace of mind, ahimsa non-violence and discovering your basic goodness. This is why young people today, most of us are so stressed out. We are so alienated from our community and from our home, from our mind, which is our home. We are depressed. We are sad. We are lonely. We are angry. And COVID-19 has aggravated it with a lot of young people losing jobs and many young people suicidal. And a lot of people if you look at the data today from John Hopkins University, about 900 people, 1,000 people plus lost their precious human life to COVID and suffering related to COVID. Therefore, Buddha's teaching on basic goodness is timeless and it's relevant now, now or ever. Why? Because it's so important to rediscover ourselves, reconnect with our mind, our basic goodness, and be authentic human being. And there are boundless ways of doing it. As I was saying, Buddha taught in 84 different thousand ways. In terms of the three yanas, the four noble truth, the eightfold path, the four immeasurables, the six parameters that Dr. Doju highlighted early on. Basically all because causes, conditions, and consequences, the law of karma. What we are now is because of a previous karma, and what we are going to go become restless now. Also because of the karmic connection that, by chance, I connected with Dr. Dodgy, who connected with Dr. Professor Dave and Professor Vasanti and the organizers of International Buddhist Conference, and to all international delegates, the venerables, the scholars, the thinkers, and kind human beings, fellow human beings, who all have basic Buddha nature here, we all, in, we all connected here because of karma, the three C's, and because of interdependence. And therefore, it's so, uh, the values of wisdom, compassion, and simplicity, and ahimsa, nonviolence, are timeless and required now more than, any, more than before. Science built spaceships. We went to the moon. We built smartphones. But small, tiny buck made the world stand still. We are all connected. Virus from Wuhan just spread across the world like a burning fire. And all of us, again, interdependent in 
interdependence we suffer together. We are again trying to find solutions in terms of vaccine, vaccine discoveries to also cure again interdependent, interdependently because of the three C's, the causes, conditions, and consequences. This, we all suffer the same conditions. We all have the same causes, and now we also have to bear the same consequences. This is why, as a global society, we need to be, basically discover our Buddha nature to be able to address, to really touch base with our mind. Be wakeful, touch base with our mind. Boomless prasha in Sanskrit as Buddha touched the earth, as soon as Buddha sitting on the Kusha grass by Niranjana river under the Bodhi tree on the full moon night at Magadha, today's Bihar, he touched base with his mind and fully awakened wakefulness taught the truth that the earlier two speakers highlighted. Therefore, the boundless ways, again, of rediscovering ourselves. Now, why basic goodness? Basic goodness is because we want to be authentic. We want to be organic. The globalized advertised industry encourages nothing but aggression, competition, therefore aggression and speed, which gives us pain, all sorts of psychological problems at individual level, societal level, and global level. Now, being authentic, is direct, having a direct experience with the real world. It's okay, even if you quarrel with your husband or with your wife, with your colleagues at work, in the marketplace, in public space, if people push and pull around and stampede, it's okay to have direct experience with the world. Because as good human being or decent human being, we want to live genuine lives as genuine human being, as ourselves and not anything else, not because somebody told you or uh, the policy has actually formulated you to become somebody else designed or the computer has designed you the way they want it to be. No, you want it to be basically decent human being, authentic human being, kind human being, compassionate human being. Also, as, sorry, uh, also as kind human being, you want to see your shortcomings. All of us have, we are a bag of emotions, extreme emotions. So this is why we have a limitation, but you also have a basic kindness, which you can extend not only to yourself, but also to others within your family, within your society, within the country. And why? It's all to actually share your truth properly. At the same time, remain steadfast with the truth. Now, here, well, how can you do that? Here's a picture. As uh, Nelson Mandela one time said, if human being can be taught how to hate, human being can also be taught how to love. Basic goodness. And we are all dreaming. We are all talking about dream house, dream car, you know, uh, dream clothes, dream brands, dream looks ideal man, ideal woman, etc. We, we have been sleeping and ignorant. Why stay wakeful? Wakeful because we want to discover ourselves. And here are the pictures of some of the students in Bhutan, young people, both lay in secular school and in monastic school. Here's a picture from Chiki Jesu Institute, founded by His Eminence, Sonsa Khensu Rinpoche. Uh, at Southeastern Bhutan and Dewatang, where young people learn how to be awake. Every day, these kids learn how to reconnect with their basic goodness. And from there, this model has spread to other parts of Bhutan in both secondary and primary education. Children from as young as pre-primary from six, seven years to 18 and 17 years in high school in Bhutan. So I'll be, I'm, uh, I'm actually offering you some visual feast, if you like, to enjoy yourself, see young people, how they try to be wakeful and reconnect with the basic goodness. Within the classroom, outside the classroom, here are also young people within the classroom. Every day before they, before they start their class, they try to reconnect them, with themselves. If Shakyamuni Buddha was alive today, He'll never call himself Buddha. Buddha was, of course, means awakened one, given 
given to honor him, he would have called himself Tathagata. Tathagata would come, Tathagata. He would, if you talk to him on phone, as Ms. Kensington Bush would say, he would say, hello, this is Tathagata speaking. This is Tathagata would like to talk to you. It's like molecule or atom would like to talk to you. That's because Tathagata means it's fully arrived. People like you and I, we have not arrived. Right. We're hanging there, we're hanging here. Uh, our mind is always restless. As Dr. Dodger was saying earlier on, this is why we need to arrive. Like these young people, they try to be wakeful and fully arrived. Here too, before the class, every day in school. Teachers are learning also how to be wakeful because education is one of the solution to really rediscover our bound, uh, our basic goodness. And this is one way of doing it. Here also again in school, walking meditation and sitting meditation try to re reconnect with ourselves. Again, in school, teachers and students. This is, these are the young teenage kids who are active, energetic, and also trying to look at themselves so that they, they can hang around with themselves and be home with themselves. Here in the playground, also not just in the classroom, but what you call as karma yoga. Karma yoga, actually here we talk about work. Even when you do dishes in the kitchen, even when you are cooking, when you're chopping your onions and tomatoes and vegetables, you can still rediscover your basic goodness. You're not just limited to gender, specifically to monks, or to, you know, as uh, Dr. Doju was saying, shaven monks in the monasteries, but also young little, little girls who are also in the playground like this little girl. Before they play, they also try to rediscover, rediscover themselves, reconnect with the basic goodness. That's because to reiterate my word once again and to recall from Kelsey Rinpoche once again, whom I have drawn largely from Rinpoche's teachings, if we can't really change human behavior until we learn to deal with our minds. So our mind is the king, body is servant. So king controls the servant. So mind controls the body. Therefore, it's important to also be courageous and look inside and see, well, see how best we can reconnect with ourselves. Well, again, uh, how, do we re how do we honor Shakyamuni Buddha, who has 2,500 years ago, he taught the basic goodness, the Tathagata, Tathagata Garva, the Buddha mind that we all possess, that is the solution for 21st century illness in a global world, you know. Otherwise, I think our education, our technology, while it, it is a double-edged sword, while it can protect in terms of material support and solutions, it can also give, make us bloom, suffer from schizophrenia, bipolar, depression, all sorts of psychological illnesses, and of course, uh, be very unhappy Yesterday, well, I understand that in India, one of the survey results from young people is that they want lots of money, but they are also miserable millennials and happy peasants. Millennials who have lots of money, who have lost their connection with basic goodness, and happy peasants who, have, who live simply, but who are happy because they're connected with their basic goodness. To, to end, my, before I end my presentation, I like to also reiterate that Buddha has taught, Shakyamuni Buddha has taught 80, in 84,000 ways. There's Noble 84,000 Project, translating the words of Buddha, which is 10 years old. And this, through reading, rereading re the words of Buddha, people around the world have benefited as far as Pakistan, Afghanistan, Indonesia, Angola, and countries in the West and in the East. In the words of, again, His Eminence Kenta Rinpoche, he says, Thus I've always believed and read the words of Buddha, the choiceless, choiceless read. You don't even have to make, worry about making choice. If you want to be strong in any way, build strong and courage mind. In order to build and sh shape your mind as courageous and bravery, you should start to have courage to read Buddha's wisdom. Start reading a page a day at least. Don't worry if you don't understand even a single meaning at first. Remember, when, when we were just a small kid, we can't even walk on feet. 
you were just walking on two arms and two legs, but still very slow. But you never gi given up. Slowly standing on feet and walking as now, we can, reading Buddha's teachings as just like reading, walking, learning walking, but how good you are walking and running. You can not walk much faster and further than aeroplane, but once you are become good at reading and learning wisdom of the Buddha, your capacity of reading and knowledge will be far beyond than you can ever imagine. So build courage and interest in reading Buddha's teaching by yourself. And to young people here, if you want to be free from delusions, read 84,000. If you want to rescue your loved ones from difficulties, difficult situations, read 84,000. If you want to get things as satisfied, read 84,000. If you want to have peace in your mind, read 84,000. If you want to be the richest guy in the world, read 84,000. If you want to make harmony in your world, read 84,000. If you want to protect those hopeless and helpless ones, read 84,000. If you want yourself to be the best in everything in people's eyes, read 84,000. If you will get them from 84,000 of the Buddha, you're fully capable to get them by yourself if you trust in yourself and build courage to start as I mentioned. Good luck to all. And lastly, to Supreme Teacher Bhagavan Tathagata Arahat, complete and perfect Buddha, glorious Kankara, Shakyamuni Buddha, to you I pay homage, to you I make offerings, in you I take refuge. May peace prevail on the world, in the world. Tadyata o muni muni, ma muni sowaha. May all of us become unaltered, authentic, and may all of us be blessed with basic goodness like you, Shakyamuni Buddha. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sodam Chuki. Uh, excellent presentation complementing the previous presentation from Bhutan, um, where you have, you know, highlighted the need to reconnect to basic goodness, you know, especially in this world, where globalizing world with so many problems, uh, including the recent pandemic. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, since we are really uh, the constraint, time constraint, uh, I, if there are any questions for Dr. Sonam Chukki, uh, please unmute your mic and ask her, but I see a few questions, uh, one or two questions here in the chat box. Um, there's one for you uh, from um, Nugian Yuan uh, uh, Zuan Pin. He, he asks, um, do you think it's a piece of cake to reconnect with our basic goodness? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. And, um, and how can youth enjoy their very basic goodness? I think you have given an excellent message to the youth, uh, you know, that, where that mind is the king and body is only the servant. And there is a need to reconnect to basic goodness, but uh, please kindly answer uh, the, this question. Thank you very much, ma'am. And thank you. The question is, uh, question is profound, expansive and difficult to answer and make an attempt. Well, every day, my, it's very simple and it's doable. Sometimes it's so simple that we run away from it. It's simple because you just have to be aware of whatever you think. And what, even if you're quarreling, even if you're so angry, say you're angry all the time, and even if you become aware once when you're angry, that itself is you are connecting with your basic goodness, with the nature. Uh, you are in a situation, lockdown situation, for example, you look at the door knob or the door and be aware of it. Enjoy that. That itself is connecting with your Tathagata Garva or your basic goodness. So as simple as that, but you need to practice. You need to be disciplined. And this is where, again, the parameter, the parameter of discipline would really feature strongly here. Thank you. I have one comment. Uh, this is another wonderful deliberation on goodness, Sunamji. Uh, I thank you very much for bringing this issue from another dimension of Buddhist philosophy, which is required for each one of us. As Nodib also rightly mentioned, I want my children should become a good human being. Every day morning, I tell my children to the same thing. I want that everybody uh, uh, talks positive word about you and I should be known to society by both of your good conduct, good behavior and good activities. 
I do not want to be known by my profession. I will be very happy if people say that my children are good, and uh, uh, so I will be very happy. So I get by uh, for both of your wonderful deliberations uh, for humankind that how we should think of our life to attain happiness. I think wonderful. Thank you very much. All three of you are. Uh, very good speakers. Very good. Thank you, Professor Dev Ji, for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll invite you in future also, all of you, uh, in some Thank other you event. Thank you very Beyond much. Support it. Yeah.